Numerical Computation, Chapter 9, Video 8. We will now talk about adaptive methods, in particular adaptive methods built on runge kutter methods. So let's look at um, some general observations for these methods. First we see that if we take smaller time steps, h, and this gives us a smaller arrow. And second, higher order methods give better approximations, meaning giving smaller arrows and closer to the exact answer. And third, if we use uniform grid, where the step size is the same at every step, then we know that the local arrow would vary at every time step, because the arrow also depends on the properties of f and its derivatives. So in an optimal situation, to minimize the computational time for best possible result, one would like to vary h such that the arrow can be uniformly distributed at each step. We um, went into a situation like this when we did um, polynomial interpolation and uh, we found a way of uh, evenly distributing the arrow by varying the interpolating points. And if you remember, and those points are called the, the Chebyshev nodes. And using Chebyshev nodes usually give you smaller arrow. So we want to have that similar idea also for this time-dependent problem where we run time steps. So such a method that would um, automatically adapt the time step size to evenly distribute arrow, they are called adaptive methods. Then um, the key step actually um, in such a method would be to get an error estimate for your approximate solution at every time step. Because since we do not know the exact solution, and we do not know how big of an error we are making at every step, a priori error estimates are usually not so easy to obtain. So here is the main idea behind it. So if we use two different methods, one is more accurate than the other, then we can approximately assume that um, the better method, the answer is very close to the exact solution. If we assume that, and then we see that the difference between the two numerical solutions actually gives us a measurement for the local error. Then we can use that information, that measurement of local error, to adjust the time step. We first compute x at t plus k from x at t with method 1. And we call that solution x at t plus h. Then we compute it again using method 2, and that is a better method, okay, and which would generate a more accurate approximation. And we call this x bar at t plus h. Then following the discussion we just had, we see that the distance between these two solutions in absolute value, that gives me a measurement for error. Then if this error shall be much bigger than the tolerance, then the time step is not good. I would reject the time step and I would try to half the step size. If the error turns out to be much smaller than the tolerance, this means I'm taking two small time steps, and what I will do will be I will just double the time step. So as um, not to waste too much effort. 
and if the arrow is approximately equal to the tolerance, mm, then I keep the step size. Okay, so here, um, approximately equal to, it's up to you. You can say I have a tolerance of a range for the arrow to lie into, max arrow, mean arrow. If arrow lies between the mean arrow and max arrow, I consider it approximately equal to. So, it's up to you. You can decide. Then, um, we see that it boils down to finding two methods with um, different accuracy. One method one not so good and method two the better one. So by the observation we made at the beginning of this video we may propose the following way. So method one we will compute xt plus h from xt with step size h using some specific method, let's say runge kutta force order method. And the second one, well, we see that um, if we take smaller step size, we get a better answer. So we can do the following. We take two steps to reach from t to t plus h. So first we compute xt plus half h from xt with the half step size using runge kutta method, and then we compute x at t, at t plus h from x at t plus half h with, again, step size half h, and with the same method as in method 1, let's say the fourth order runge kutta. So this approximation shall be better. And then we can plug these two methods into the um, adaptive algorithm and iterate. But we see that this method is rather wasteful of computational time because at each time step, you actually will have to run the iteration three times. One iteration in method one, one Runge Kutta fourth order step, and two steps in method two because you take two small steps to each. Okay. And then that's really expensive. There is a better approach due to um, Felberg, and it's built on a some higher order Runge Kutta method. We'll take a closer look at this one. So he has um, a fourth order Runge Kutta method, um, which is listed here. So to compute the next step is the previous step plus a um, four k constant k one, k three, k four and k5 combined in this specific way with those weights where the k's, k1, k2, k3, k4, k5 are computed in this specific way. So you see, it's carefully arranged to achieve the desired order. And one can show that this method is actually fourth order. Well, you might say, What's so good about this method? We already have the fourth order classic Runge Kutta. This one looks more complicated. Yes, that's true. It is more complicated, but it has some very special advantages, which will come now. Now, one could keep the computation for the fourth order and then compute an additional constant, K6, in this way, with these weights, and combining the K6 together with the other case in this way, so adding that term with K6 and adjust the weights for the other case, and you can show that this actually gives you a fifth order method. So here you see, to get a better method, you needed to do very little extra work, just that and that. And now we assume that the fifth order approximation is almost the exact solution, then the difference between these two serves as a measurement for the error. 
Now we look at a pseudocode for adaptive Runge-Gude 4th and 5th order um, with a time step controller as follows. So, given that t0 is the initial time, tf is the final computing time, and x0 is the initial condition, h0 is your first guess of the step size, and max is the maximum number of iteration. And there's E min, there's E max, that's the um, range for your error tolerance. It should lie between them. And we also give an H min and H max. So the step size you choose would lie between these two. And now we can set H, the step size, to be the H0, the first one, and T is T0 and x0 is x0, and we set k to be 0, and k is a, a counter for the number of iteration. Then we have a while loop. If k is less than the maximum number of iterations, and the t is less than the final computing time, we do the loop. So in the loop we will check. If h is less than the minimum of h, then we set h to be h min. We don't want h to be too small. Else, if h is bigger than the maximum of h, and then we set h to be the h max, and we end. So after this if loop, the h value should lie between h min and h max. Then we compute the runge kutta felberg fourth order and fifth order method, and we um, compute the measurement for arrow by measuring the distance between those two answers. Okay, so this is the step that actually takes most of the time in here. And after that, we have the arrow, and then we check it with the arrow tolerance. So if arrow is bigger than the maximum arrow, that means I'm taking two big time steps. And also, if h is bigger than h min. So if h shall be smaller than the minimum h, even if this passes, you will not end up in this, what you will do. Okay. So then we know the arrow is too big, then I will half the step size, and I will reject the step, I'll redo it. Else, I would accept the step, and then I add the counter, k becomes k plus 1, and then t becomes t plus h. I keep track of the time now also. And then I set the xk to be the, the fifth order of this runge kutta felberg which is a better answer. And then there is additional if test. If the arrow shall be less than the e min, that means the arrow is really, really small, then probably... I don't have to take such a time step, then I will just double the time step here. Okay, then I end the if test here, and then I end the while loop. So this algorithm will automatically um, adjust the step size to guarantee that at every iteration, the local arrow is within the tolerance. Hope um, that was fun and you enjoyed it and see you next time.